five, four, three, two, one. How's life and such, everybody? Feels Better good. Business. Life fantastic. <laughs> All right. Nice out cocky. <laughs> <laughs> Why oh. is that, OG? Nice to cocky. It's cocky. He is lovely. He is a While I make. The idea for our popularity. I make eighty-one percent. Me and Meso make twelve uh, percent combined. That's like ninety-two percent. Is and, this based uh, on uh, video game playing figures? No, this is based on our actual videos, like the individual videos we do. Yeah. On our on the channel. Yeah. Of let's plays. Mhm. Mm not exactly I mean, like, the same. Well, yeah, it's not exactly <laughs> the same, but like you know, it's what else do we have? We right. the only thing we do Look. is like TTV. And we can't I, really rate it all on TTV. I think LJ would be pretty popular if he had played Hero Factory Breakout. Because <laughs> or, that, that would be a big achievement for him. No. That's, that's, <laughs> my, that's my next endeavor. We're going to see uh, uh, who gets um, more more views. Kahi's breakout vids or mine months later. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, like a... come on, uh, you know, listeners of the episode. Give me a hand. Dude, it'll probably be LJ because you'll hear his girly screams. Hey. Uh, 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 yeah. Screams of manliness. <laughs> of course, you several types of people would enjoy those screams. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of anyway, course. anyway. We filled our... No, yes. Yeah, we filled Just our Just make quota. a ton okay. of videos and inflate your view count. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, what an interesting intro. Okay, we'll get things going. You know, get them started up. I'm messing up. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Tenebrae Invictus. And I'm Potu, back from the semi-dead. Yes. Potu, <laughs> how long has it been since you've been on a TTV episode? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while because I blame college, you know. It's actually pretty hectic most of the time I'm doing homework, and if I'm not doing homework, I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you're back for a special guest appearance. Yes. Right. In Vin's absence. If only, if only Vin was here, we could. I know. To Vin. Do... Vin yeah. would destroy me. That's all I gotta but say. No. On that note, no. colleges and uh, nap time. Why? I think those. To go together. Why? I'm just putting you this idea no out choice. there. You have no I, choice. But anyway. It's like, you know, kindergarten, you're like, let's go to nap time. You're like, no, I want to play with like some Legos and stuff. See, I'm tying it back into here. <laughs> and you're, you're, you're like, the teacher's like, nope, you have to go nap because everybody needs to sleep. And you just spend that rest of that nap time tossing and turning. And then you go to college and the teacher's like, okay, you can like stay up as late as you want. And you're like, I just want to go to sleep. Like, I don't even care what you have to say. I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice if you, you know, went to sleep right now and you didn't have to talk to you for the rest of the episode. I mean, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> LJ, you're so mean. Mm, but I'm brighter than him. I, I, okay, I, 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 man, I'm, I must be... Angry. Well, LJ, your color is how's green. That? <laughs> yeah. LJ, how's, LJ, how's that math working out for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously brighter than all of you because I got blue. Yes. Oh, oh, blue? Well, well, guess what, Potu? I got nothing to say. I have white cuz skulls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I am better than all of you anyway. Yes. Wow. 
Okay. Wow. <laughs> if anyone's the brightest, it's the Asian in this group. And since he's only a half Asian, he's like <laughs> he, he's like that that like you know the interracial kid that everybody doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it depends who looks at it, because white people always see me as Asian. And okay, vice come on, we're not we're not getting into this discussion on TV. <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? I'm, I'm <laughs> what are we doing? supposed to be? We're, we're debating racism. The, the election is coming. Come on, we, we gotta oh, give it to you. Okay. Go there, TTV coverage, the election, 2012. No, don't talk to out of there, man. <laughs> okay, so okay. Without, without further up. ado, we'll hop straight into our first segment. The, it's everyone's favorite. You know it. You sometimes like it, sometimes hate it. The news. Oh. In the news this week, we have 2013 LEGO sets revealed, 2013 LEGO books announced on Amazon, 10937 Arkham Asylum revealed, Heroes in a Half Brick, and Halo 4 Meltdown Vortex leaks and progression. And that is the news, soon to be followed by good, some good old commentary. Hooray. Commentary. Yes. Should we start from the top, start from the bottom, start from the middle, and expand outwards? What do we do? If, okay, if, if I, I, there's a reason I wrote it in the order I did. In the... <laughs> so that it could be completely scrambled? <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. Least important to most important, which is why we're talking about the um, Arkham Asylum thing soon. Oh. All right, well, no, we're going to start from top to bottom. Oh, gosh, darn it. The first thing, and I'm going to give a little bit of background on this. A couple nights ago, I forget how many, I was re I was going to bed. And I was like, all right, did my guess. I'm going to go like sleep. Well, before I slept, I was like, you know what? A commonly known fact about me is that I, I like to try and always be the first to like report the new Lego pictures every year. Mainly this part of the year, not so much the yeah, um, summer sets. And I have like a list of sites bookmarked that have typically have a track record of posting the sets before other places. And I was like, you know what? It's been a while. I have not really been doing it consistently because I didn't expect there to be any pictures. I'm going to flip through my bookmarks list and see if there are any. Lo and behold, they were there. <laughs> All uh, eight of the Hero Factory sets of 2013. All of the Ninjago sets for next year, all of the Lego City sets for next year, etc., etc. And I made a video on my personal channel about the Hero Factory sets and broke the news to everybody, and it spread like a wildfire since then. And uh, these sets, guys, they're uh, very interesting. Well, what are your thoughts? I have a link. Hmm. All right, I, my gallery. I feel I feel it's um, somewhat fitting that I uh, express my opinions, twisted opinions on these, if I may. Yes, you, you go first. All right. This is in uh, order of who fights who, by the way. So here we have Natalie Breeze turning into Robin Hood to fight the ogre hiding under the bridge. Volk decides to skip a franchise line of Legos to fight the rock monster. Ferno is back from his trip from the, the Knight's Kingdom to fight the devil. And Raka is the knight in shining armor with a sword and shield here to fight the alien bugs from space. Oh, and all the bad guys, you know, the devil, the rock monster, the ogre under the bridge, and the bugs, <laughs> they have snot for brains. <laughs> Quite literally. And there you have it. Yes. They're Here's not what... good. Yeah. Um... They're like yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to wait for anybody to say anything. I'm going next. <laughs> Ferno looks emo. Like he, he really does look like he's like, he just woke up one day. And he's like, you know what? I hate life. 
<laughs> yeah, well, he decided he, he, painted, so he, he painted giant eye shadow over his eyes so big like it covers most of his face. And he, he got this like really long black long coat cape thing that looks super impractical and doesn't really fit in anywhere else. And he just started like putting black over his body and like tattooing flames into himself and be like, yeah, this is Uferno. <laughs> Everybody sucks. <laughs> and the cape can magically suspend itself in the air. Yeah, I know. In the in the air. Just yes. half there. Um quite honestly, the only one I that I think the well, not the only one, but the the one of the best design is Raka. I've Raka in the past has sort of been kinda of iffy for me. I didn't really like him all too much. And this one is color scheme really works well. I was in the picture Mess was giving me. The uh the gold is it looks like a different gold. I'm not going to say it is a different gold because I'm not into that, you know, like, you know, specific color thing. But it looks kind of different to me. It looks more, like, complementary to the, you know, the, the gray and black he has. And the lime green naturally works quite well. So it just looks like a very nicely redesigned set. Rocket does have the best color scheme out of the bunch. It's pretty cool. Um, honestly, if there's one thing I'm going to buy, it's going to be Pyrox. Yes. Because, yeah, the Metru Red Torso he has, I've been looking for that all over. I, I need one to finish my self-mock, and that would be nice. I knew you worshipped the devil. <laughs> 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 okay, I... I He's, now, of all yeah. the sets, Pyrox is the worst. <laughs> Lego has gone over the line. He's the devil, he has blood trickling down his chin, and he has a nose ring! <laughs> it's pretty lousy. <laughs> it, yeah. Oh, I'm, I like the new face mold for the villains. They look, I mean, they look they hideous. They look really organic. Yeah. Really at all. I, I, I like, you know, I like the sort of where they're going of that. It's instead of like having everybody have helmets and stuff. Kind of nice. Yes. Um, the Rock Raider monster. I, mean, I, I don't know where they come up with this. Bruiser. It's. Bruiser. You know, we were talking about this when Savage Planet came out, and we were like, you know what, Hero Factory, they, everybody started with blasters, and then they, like, sort of sort of degenerated, and now, like, instead of using blasters, they're now using, like, you know, they started using swords, and then they started using spears, and, like, you know, everything Savage Planet. Now, like, literally, Breeze has a couple of daggers attached to a stick. <laughs> like, that is literally what they're going for here. That's why they have those brown pieces. It's like, there's, like, two knives... And there's a stick, and that's it. You know, that actually does make Breeze look a little bit better in my eyes, if you look at it that way. I was, I was. It's an improvement. Was, yeah. <laughs> it's a big but, improvement. And, like, everybody else has just a giant shield. <laughs> yes. Makes, you know, and, uh, of course, a friend, oh, like, you know, who's it? Rock only has a sword, and Bulk has this, like, drill thing. And they've just kind of nixed all the blaster weapons. I'm not sure why they do that, but okay. Dude, they're knights in shining armor. That's uh -huh. all I gotta say. But uh, but not Ferno. <laughs> <That's He's>, like... <laughs> no, he's more like he's more like uh, a baron in shining armor. I, I don't yes. know. Just, he looks. He looks kind of evil that, to be honest. Really yeah, don't... I know. I yeah, I, I thought yeah. he's gonna be like he's gonna be taken over and become. You know, the villain. For Sith me. Lord Ferno. Darth yeah, Ferno. Sith Lord. No. <laughs> Darth Ferno or something. I, I, just, I imagine him having, like, this really thick German accent, acting sort of like a... Uh, I can't really say it on here. But, like, you know, so I, I can, kind of like a jerk. Only a much richer jerk. No, no, no. Ferno's going to be talking to Rock and be like, <sighs> Rock, I am your father. And then Raka, you know, justifiably screams no because <laughs> no one wants to be fathered by Ferno. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What are your Raka. thoughts on these I sets, Mange? I, I think it's kind of odd that they're going to this knight style. Yeah. And I think Bruiser looks like a Rock Monsters reboot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's Bruiser. <laughs> They really have gone for this whole night's thing, haven't they? Like they have, they have like the trolls for Pyrox. They have the uh, sort of like, I, I mean, bug sort of thing for Scarox. 
the Ogrim is obviously an ogre, and uh, Breezer is a generic golem. Yeah. Now, everybody else like has a swords and shields and bow and arrows and oh, gothic flames. <laughs> it's They're like, <laughs> what if everybody's just sort of been sent back in time? That's what, yes. Something? Well, let's see. They get upgraded. Then they have to go somewhere primitive. <laughs> then they get upgraded again. Then they have to be primitive again. Kind of odd. Hmm, sooner or later. seeing a pattern. Yeah, sooner or later, they're going to be so highly um, advanced that they're not even going to be able to walk. They're just going to have, like, jets for, for feet. Wow. And then they're going to become so primitive, they're just going to be cavemen. <laughs> Actually, it seems that... like it's going back upward. It went from jungles past to nights. So maybe we'll have cowboys, and that'll be cheesy as heck. People already now, that's skip, something I you can skipped get out behind. on breakout. <laughs> yes, now. people already made a cowboy concept for Hero Factory. Yep, <laughs> I, I, I can see that. Howdy, Corroder. You be going back to jail with them cattle you be illegally smuggling. <laughs> wow, really? Because everyone Corroder. knows if there are animals involved with the bad guys, they're going to jail too. Look at Waspix. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Well, you, we know, you know Jimmy what? Springer will feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a sort of interesting idea. You know how we're saying, like, all of the villains look more organic in their, you know, than the heroes do. They they look a lot different from any of the other villains we've seen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if these were the original inhabitants of the Hero Factory universe? And... Makuhiro was the guy that created the Hero Factory, and so, like, you know, slowly, robots sort of took over everything. And now, like, Makuhiro is trying to drive the last of the organics out, and he's sending these heroes to exterminate them. Wow. But then, finally, one organic decides, wait a second, the, uh, these guys are trying to take us over. Quick, I have to gather a squad from all parts of the galaxy to form a team. What should we call it? We should call it. Uh, N7, and we're gonna we're gonna get in a ship, and we're gonna have a. Uh, a, a <laughs> that sounds pretty dark for Edie. Lego. Edie, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have a, a yeah, and then and then uh we're gonna fight the what should we call them, the creepers? Yeah, we'll call them the creepers. <laughs> hero news and, flash, hero <laughs> factory, or the reapers. <laughs> and then and then <laughs> finally, in a climactic battle, the the fans of Hero Factory will have to make a choice. Do they like <laughs> Surge, Ferno, or Breeze better? <laughs> <laughs> and that choice, so if, you if, you, if, if, if you pick Breeze, then everyone's going to become female. If you pick Surge, <laughs> you're going to be looking at how, how you can get some stick new threads. If you pick <laughs> Ferno, the world will end. And that's, that, that's it. The world will like cease. I'm it's funny, like, if these. they do choose Breeze and everything, like, you know, symbiosis comes and everybody turns bio-organic, and then the world is Bionicle 2014. Yeah. Oh, don't tell oh, me <laughs> 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 no, So the synthesis ending is the plot for Bionicle. <laughs> <laughs> We're done here. Yeah. We are yeah, done. Yeah. Overall, <laughs> this wave of Hero Factory is pretty interesting. I want to see the story for this. I want to see what it's going to be. I like all the villains, except for Scarox. He's a weak link. I like all the heroes, except for Breeze. I think she's a weak link. And, um... The weakest link. Yes. Rock has got a katana and shield, and he's gold. Yes. I think it just you. looks great. His, his, the color scheme is so well done. It really is. Like, it's Because I remember when they first came out with Rock, and I'm like, gold and green and, you know, like, silver? Are you kidding me? And it wasn't that great. I'm surprised at how well it's working here. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. It's like if they came out for a lawyer Hero Factory set. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, he's trying too hard. Look at me, Factory guys. Sort of cool, but not really. It, I like how Bruno <laughs> looks. Kind of. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a serious person. I, I can kick everybody's rear. Look at me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I deserve it. Breeze, we need to be together. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> oh my! It's like, yeah, that's. He's trying too hard. Look at that guy. He's, yeah. Anyhow.
now, now I have a couple of Ninjago set pictures to show you all. Ooh. Ooh. Ninjago! And then, it, and then LJ loses it. Yes. There we have the stone warrior bike. And as you can room, see, room. we have Ninjago packaging displayed oh, as the final battle with the golden ninja in the top right. <laughs> then. A gold ninja, dude. Yes. I like the bike. Yes. Then <laughs> we have Cole's power drill. Cole is obviously the ninja. Well, obvious for those of you who actually follow Ninjago. He's the earth ninja. And he has this interesting contraption. Ninjago. Ninjago's ending this is its final wave, by the way. Or if, if it wasn't obvious. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Oh, hush, LJ. It will all be over soon. <laughs> yes. Then we have Garmatron. Some tank thing. I like tanks. Yes, tanks are very... I like trains. Neat. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Then we have Kai's, Kai's fire robot. And if you actually look at this thing, it uses HF elements to create the uh, limb structure and whatnot. So they're... Ooh. Huh. Not is bad. It, is it actually Guys, HF? Exo Force no, is, is back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it looks like it. Exo Force oh, is great with HF elements. I wish. Exo Force was just so legit. They should bring that back. Then we have the Golden Dragon. Ninjago. Wow. LJY. All those gold parts. Yes. And I just yes. Finally, the flagship set, the Temple of Light, ah, featuring the golden okay. robot. <laughs> I can't even. I realized I was missing out so much in Ninjago. Why <laughs> did I start now? <laughs> it's... Katana. Yes. The Temple of Light. So they have a katana of light, and it's just like, you know, they're trying to find a ninja of light, and it turns out to be whoever the blue ninja was <laughs> the entire time. Jay. And he, he, Jay! Like, he, he puts Put... on the golden armor in order to lead him to, uh,. Whoever the no, villain he's is the Ninjago. herald for the Corpus. seventh ninja. Oh god! Wow. He's not Takua. <laughs> you know we do. Well, I mean, we do have, uh, LJ, we do have seven ninja, don't we? We have Kai, Cole, Zane, Jay, Lloyd, then Derek. Wait, don't don't forget the brown, yes, Derek, the brown ninja. Derek, the brown ninja, and so then we have a seventh. <laughs> yeah. I would. Okay. I would like to point out that none of those are traditional Japanese names. No. And yeah, like they Lloyd. should not be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lloyd. Wow, that's Japanese. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. I can sit. Oh, Lloyd san, you oh, come for breakfast. We have rice rolls and pig sweat. Okay, so anyway. Yeah. Let's wow. Go. <laughs> that's right. The name of the episode it's rice it. rolls I'm and just... pig sweat. Yes. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. The name of the episode is No. The actions of LJ Within are not representative of the views of TTV as a whole, and we shall not be held accountable for any hate crimes, lawsuits, <laughs> or deprivation of character. That <laughs> no, that's from... just Kahi's job. Then finally. Seriously, that's, that's... Finally. In, in, in this 2013 roundup of news, I guess we'll like talk about the Lego books announced on Amazon, really. Bunch of books got announced. There are really only two interesting ones. <clears throat> Hero Factory. Alien Attack and the Alien Wars. So basically these villains are aliens or the brain slug things or the, or the aliens and they're just possessing the organic inhabitants. I have to... So... Krata? Aliens. Yes. Aliens really only work, though, if you're not already on, like, a billion different planets. I know, right? You know? It's like, the Hero Factory, every mission, you're like, oh, we're gonna go to this planet. We're gonna go to this planet. We're gonna go to this planet. They've encountered aliens, like, all over the place, so... That's why I'm, that, that's why I'm glad they're not actually calling the theme Alien Attack. I don't know why this book is called it. They're calling it Brain Attack. 
Which I guess really back. isn't better, but it kind of is in a way. It's, well, it's so probably it's something that's undiscovered, and that's why they would call it alien, because it's outside of their normal control and something that they aren't working with. Should have done research on Krana. Krana. Yeah. Krana. Are, are, did Jog, like, does the Jago actually have graphic novels? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Graphic novel. And, uh, necessary. oh, good grief. Lego Friends? Written, what are they going to do with that? Written by Kathy Hopka. What? 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 They still what? have her? <laughs> Wait a second. No, I didn't see that. No way. <laughs> well, then. Huh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> she decided to flee from Bionicle's sailing ship. In order to write Lego Friends? <laughs> she was probably fired. Have... Not, or not fired, but not... You know, like, it, she wasn't probably part of the... Blood. <laughs> she didn't probably... She probably didn't leave the, the like, the, the Lego thing. They just probably, re, like, had Greg. Resigned and they were like, you know what? We have someone... Department. Yeah, we have someone who can do this. And then Kathy just writes different stuff. Like, that's how writers work. It's all stab. business and money and business stab. and money. Stab, stab, stab. Stop. Still, I can't get what they would put in a Lego Friends book. Like, all the sets are like, oh, so-and-so does cooking, and so-and-so does, I don't know, you know, maybe, shops maybe it, or something. Maybe it's going to surpass all of our expectations. We're going to have the character, we're, we're going to say this character's name is Slice Lily. Life. And then we're going to have this one. This character's name is Bree. And they're cooking when all of a sudden Lily grabs the kitchen knife, swings it, and chops off Bree's head. Then we have to go to the NYPD friends this the uh, investigation oh, sh- sh- with sh- a sh- crazy sh- um Where is this going? Uh uh friends Cast. Detective Kate Friends something <laughs> decide to investigate the murder of poor Lego friends and she has to jump through hoops of fire, trailed by um, Lego friends, a, a writer, um, Brick Castle. Wow! Shut up. Just, just. Do, okay. Do you want me even? You, you took too long to set it up. This is how it goes. Okay. The world is turning pink, so these girls form the government's friends division, and they go out and try to discover what's actually turning the world pink, as well as other. Unexplained phenomena. Elena's girly And box. also experience, and I can also experience an alternate dimension. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's no, no, totally... no, you shouldn't. No, if it, if the yeah. world's turning pink, I'm getting out of here. Agreed. I'm a girl, but I don't like pink. No, you're staying here. <laughs> oh. I'll just kind of suck this up. He's like <laughs> a very white person. He's just like, yes, I'm racist. I'm sexist. Apple pie, beer, <laughs> guns, America. <laughs> America, heck yeah. So anyway, let's see. What, what do we have next on our news? Uh, Arkham Asylum set reveal. Kahi, oh, Kahi oh, what right. are your thoughts okay. on this? Okay, well, you know, you know me. I'm I'm a Batman fan. I like, I'm a comic book fan. I like Batman. I'm sick of Lego Batman. I'm just like, you know what, they're like Lego superheroes, where we take all those sets we made before, make them a bit smaller, and charge just as much for them. If not more. This is, like, <laughs> if not more. This is Arkham Asylum Breakout. It is $159.99. It's $160 for this counting at home. And, uh, this is kind of ridiculous. Like, for a $160 set. Yeah, it's you're kind of ridiculous. Post the pictures. Yeah. Yes, do that actually at my show. Hmm. Um, okay, so basically yeah. we have Harley Quinn, this disguised as like some nurse, goes in, and I'm guessing she's trying to break the Joker out. Either that, or this is like the first time they've met. And like, you know, if anyone's seen the animated series, Harley Quinn mm-hmm. is just supposed to be this person, like, uh, you know, um an assistant, an intern to Arkham Asylum, and sh- the Joker sort of, like, corrupted her and convinced her to become crazy. Yeah. It's actually, it's, it's actually kind of tragic. And then he leads her on this whole beast, really. So, 
Arkham Asylum, like most of you know, was a set released by Lego for the Lego Batman line, you know, I don't know how long ago. How long did you guys say it was? A couple years, like five years, maybe? Anyhow, uh, I'm going to see if I can like, bring up a picture of the old set. Yeah, I'm get- I've actually never seen the old set. Maybe that's because I don't really care yeah. enough, but I'm, I'm interested. The thing about the old set is uh, that I don't, I don't. It was not actually this much, if I remember right. And you know, I don't take my word for this because I it was so long ago. I don't remember, but I do remember like you know liking it in the Lego catalog. I think it was seventy nine ninety nine, like most big sets. <laughs> and uh, you know that Lego line. Let me grab a good picture here. Uh, and from what it's worth, it, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't the best set ever, but it wasn't too bad either. Hmm. And it, it was I, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty small for that much money. But when I mean, you look at it, that's that's kind of ridiculous. But this one is twice as much. As the set originally cost, seventy nine ninety nine would be like you know eighty, and this is one hundred sixty. So it's twice as much, and the set, as everyone can plainly see, is not twice as big. Yeah. The um, it looks like a one hundred dollars set, even by today's money standards. Yeah. Yeah. It looks. It, it wouldn't be so bad if it if it went. But like a lot of Lego sets nowadays, they're only basically building like the front of the building. They're just not, there's no like you know there's no back or sides or anything. They're just building the front of the assignment. No depth. Yeah, there's no, yeah there's no depth to it, which is it it's just kind of you know yeah wasteful I guess. So the okay the older set had uh, let me see look at look at it had Poison Ivy Riddler uh, two guards Scarecrow. Can't tell if that who's in the, like uh, that bat thing on the roof that's actually Minifigure or not. I forget. Mm-hmm. And of course, Batman and Nightwing. And Nightwing, Nightwing's like one of my favorite Batman characters. High so, five. So, yes, he's awesome. In this one, they've replaced him with Red Robin. Uh, not actual, mm-hmm. like I guess I'm not sure where Lego's basing it off of. But right now, Robin is Damian Wayne, and Red Robin is. Tim Drake. Yeah. I mean, there's really like no difference, except Damien Wayne is of course Bruce Bruce Wayne's son, and uh, I don't know Tim wasn't really creative. He was just like Red Robin. Yum. Red yep. Red. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, replacing Nightwing with Red Robin is just kind of. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I like. I I really wanted Nightwing to you know to be reimagined in the set with like maybe a new custom hairpiece. But I guess that's not gonna happen. The Joker oh. is not in his usual Joker duds. Instead, in uh you know like a Jumpsuit. like yeah like a, the the yellow prison wear, which is kind of odd because nobody else is wearing orange prison wear. Did you notice? <laughs> nobody else. Uh, They're yeah. all in the <laughs> asylum. Wow. But only, only he's wearing this prison guard. So, yeah. Um, so you have that. Uh, you have Harley Quinn. Oh, sorry, what? Uh, I was about to say, you're getting confused with the colors. Yellow, orange, it's orange. <laughs> yes. Same difference. Harley Quinn, uh, you know, this one, I think it's, you know, it's a new minifigure face, a new printing it's interesting to have this. I'm pretty sure, like, some people are going to take this and reenact the classic Batman episode from the animated series in which, you know, she turns into Harley Quinn. Apparently, she even has a station set up so you can change into her, like, her hairpiece and stuff like that. I don't know what's up with that, but I guess it's an interesting concept. Yeah. Maybe uh, it's what you just that. said. It's a station where she can change the headgear. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is that, like, did they actually put an Arkham, like, you know what, our, our, you know, our nurses might have to put on, like, some clown hats some of these days. We better make a room, (laughs) the asylum, so that they can have, like, this makeup clown hat station. Yeah, uh, duh, Kai, it's obvious the inmates are depressed that they're in jail, 
And so entertain me. Yeah. Do 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 Juggle <laughs> knives for my juggle <laughs> knives for my amusement. Pew pew. pew. Or right, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so we have so we have, you know, uh, there's a vehicle in this one uh, that carries a Joker. Apparently, puts him like a straitjacket device, so he won't get loose. Yes. Device. Really. <laughs> device. Straitjacket device. What? Yeah. I don't really know what it is, but it's called you know. a straitjacket. I figured no, a straitjacket's different. No, but it's he's not in yeah. a straitjacket. He's like in a sort of cage thing. Yeah, but that's what I'm like. It's it's, it's, it's somewhat like it, but. Go Whatever. A, a, come on, Kahi. Yeah, no, this is it's a perfectly legitimate. Um, Keep talking. It's what you do best. Wait. To... <laughs> exactly. All right. So, uh, you know, there's also poison ivy, the penguin, the scarecrow, and a guard. So they've replaced. I think they've sort of kicked out that one guard, and they have uh, replaced who is it, Riddler, with <laughs> penguin. 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 Penguin is just, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not going to be the first to say, the I, name do, says I, he's dirty. Like, I don't like how the you know, the shorter minifigures, you know how they, you can't even move their legs at all, I hate that, I really do, I wish Lego could come up with a way that you could like, you know, move the legs of the smaller minifigures or something, so you could actually make like animations or whatnot with them, just as a stand, I, I just dislike those in principle, um, but yeah, uh, Scarecrow looks a lot more hideous and creepy. Sort of like LJ now. Hey. Than he did in his previous version. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I mean, if, you, after you, if you actually try to look closely, I mean, there's a large... Oh, I guess you can't in that picture. But there is a large difference. Scarecrow is just more angly. And, of course, Poison Ivy is Poison Ivy. Yes. It's a pretty yeah. interesting I mean, set of... overall. Her dress is like made out of completely of plants. Mm-hmm. So if you ever lose just control of her powers, that's not gonna be good. Yes. Okay. That's all I have to say. All right. It's a lame please. adaptation of the Arkham Asylum video game. I hate it. <laughs> and Robin shouldn't even be in here. <laughs> or Penguin. Yeah. Wow, this sucks. Well, there's one more I'm thing that kind of sucks. Lego related. Legos announced they're acquiring the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles license. Uh, and we'll be producing uh, sets based on the new Nickelodeon show. Oh, never mind. If they were going to go off of the old shows and just do stuff from that, that sounds fantastic. I would love to see yes. the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Legos. But I, don't, I haven't seen the uh, new Nickelodeon show, but... It's Nickelodeon, so I have to say. Yes. Here's what I have to say. They're like, you know what? We should make a Lego <laughs> adaptation of a Nickelodeon show. But instead of doing that really popular with all ages, which we've previously worked with, called Legend of Korra, you know, from <laughs> Avatar to Last Airbender, no. No, we're going to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is, uh, you know. That set right Keep there that- is what to expect quality-wise. Kid friendly. Wow. But Poto, don't you know, violence is kid friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, actually, now that you bring that up, Kahi, considering they made um, Avatar: The Last Airbender sets from the original yeah. series, having at least one Legend of Korra set would be fantastic. They could easily do uh, what's it? A uh, pro bending. To the tournament thing. I mean, yes, the pro they, bending they, arena. They they've already done that with like Ninjago and stuff. I don't see why they you know they wouldn't do that for Legend of Korra. You know, you can just build up, up the sets. You can have actual um, battles. Echo. Yeah, bring yeah, it up on Kuso. Great. We probably should. It seems like a great idea. They've already worked the license before. They still have you know obviously they're publishing Nickelodeon sets. So they still have a connection with Nickelodeon in the line. It's just a logical conclusion. There's yeah yeah. Maybe we should do some Young Justice sets, but, uh, yeah, anyhow. Cause, mm. yeah. Don't start, Kai. Come on, Young Justice sets. How awesome would that be? Uh, 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 uh. Not awesome, actually. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one anyhow. set we've seen. There will be quite a few. It looks pretty bad. 
I mean, it, it looks like a don't, generic Lego thing. You don't know, judge a line by one cent. I won't. <laughs> I'll judge it are. by a lot of cents. Okay, Elder. Yes. What did you call me? Nothing. What, there... Spud Face? Yeah, that's right. I went there. Uh-huh. What would be like, <laughs> you know, the a very popular kids line now they could adapt into a Lego set? Bionicle. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. <laughs> because we Not all like know. Six, six. We all know that at least there's one kid who's a fan of it here, right, Kai? Oh, snap. (laughs) Wow, just what it would be. Wow, just what (laughs) Yes. All right, well. Meso cannot be considered a kid, but anyway, go on. No, I cannot. Anyway. We must now progress into our Halo 4 News Roundup for this week. And the important... (laughs) The important details we'll be covering today are the two final maps, which are Meltdown, and haven't actually seen any gameplay of this yet, but we know it's it, it's we know of its existence, and I'll get to why. Vortex. And uh, then, the game has been leaked, and we have some details on the progression system. So, right off the bat, Meltdown. It is basically a map that's shaped like a figure eight. And if any of you remember the map, this Halo CE map, Ice Fields, oh, it's yay. it's basically Ice Field. Oh yay! Hence the name as well. I mean, you know how Bungie is. When they remake a map, they give it a similar name in context. Meltdown. So. Meltdown, Ice, ice Fields. You know, melting down of the ice um, field. What about hemorrhage? That I don't I don't see. Blood gold bleeding. hemorrhage hemorrhage is like a heart thing. So no, it's like I, when you're bleeding and you can't stop it. I don't isn't it bleeding in your head though? I thought a hemorrhage is headshot. No, I'm <laughs> e- either way, that's just what Bungie does. They they consistently name their maps depending on. If only Bungie the was still name. making Halo. <laughs> or three four three. Hemorrhage is just ble- bleeding in general. Yes. I, I'm used to saying Bungie. I've been a fan for 10 years, and it's just, you get used to the same word. But 343 yeah. three now. I've been a fan for 10 years, and at the first <laughs> thought, loadouts for Halo 4, you think they're going to put rocket launchers there. Come on, Pochu! A friggin' lo- rocket launcher. Well, we'll get to the loadout stuff in a sec. Yes, we will. We must. If any of you want to check out Meltdown for yourself, I'm going to link a video. And I'll, I'll link you a picture of the Hero Factory set. <laughs> Meltdown. Yay! I'll post this video in the description. And Anyway, the map Vortex. We know of yes. its existence because some dude illegally got a copy of the game <laughs> and took a screenshot of the map list. Not confirmed. I guess there's always the chance it could be fake. I don't personally think it is. I'll post the picture. It looks like it's going to be another Forerunner themed, medium to large, 4v4, uh, probably vehicular map. Sweet. There's so much fun with the vehicles. Me too. And with this, we also got a bunch of other confirmation of details from this same person. Such as, Assault is not returning as a game type. So, Assault acts. Aww. Um. How are we going to play Griffball? Because Griffball exists as its separate game type now, and it's built off of the oddball thing. Wow. <laughs> That's true. Um, 343 can use... Like what they did with Halo Reach, they started making custom game types that were in their own category. Yeah, they can always add an assault later. But anyway, um, the only new drivable vehicle, the only new drivable vehicle is the Mantis Mech. And that saddens me greatly. But this person's not saying anything about returning vehicles in the past, so. Yeah. The other vehicle, the Mammoth, the Elephant Replacement, is apparently not going to be in multiplayer. Only in Campaign and Spartan Ops. So. Epic sigh. And then, you know, obviously the game's leaked. It has been leaked. It's available for download online. So I want to warn 
all of our fans that may listen to this and may be fans of Halo, if you don't want the game spoiled, if you were going to go dark, which means like stay away from the internet, don't click on any links that may take you to, you know, spoiler content about the game's plot, single player story, etc. If you were going to go dark now would probably be the best time to do that to avoid spoiling the game for yourself. So if you don't care, then click away. Well, if you don't care, stick around. If you do care, yeah, click. Don't try and look into that too much and be wary of clicking on things that may lead you to mm. this kind of stuff. So. On that note, real quick, for legal reasons, KTV does not condone uh, pirating or illegal stealing a game, like uh, any you know, leak game or imagery from the internet. That being said, I personally condone it, so go do it, and I'll be doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> Just inform you that it's out and there. And subsequently banned. <laughs> and subsequently banned from an Xbox Live account. No, um... <laughs> yeah. Like, if any of you are willing to risk it, because, you know, I, I, I've had to pay, like, a ton of money for my Xbox, and I don't want that to mess anything up. Otherwise, I, if it was for PC, I'd be, like, all over that <laughs> right now. Wow. And Kitty knows me. I'd do it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I just... Yeah, just be careful of this. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it because it could seriously mess up your Xbox. But yeah, there's, you know, there's your sort of PSA for the day when it comes to regarding especially like, you know, leaked games for consoles and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You are a terrible person. All- well, I mean, it's – I there's probably going to be it. like – yeah, there's probably going to be uh, – a link going around or maybe even YouTube videos around like, oh, instructions to how to download Halo 4 onto your computer or onto your Xbox. And there's going to be a, a lot of them that probably contain the virus and they're just taking advantage of this to try to spread the virus around or, you know, do whatever. I know like a lot of people here were hit with that Skype virus a while back too. So it's just you have to be careful. Do not take – any source, you know, any links or click any links from untrustworthy sources, especially just from a random YouTube video. If it is in the video, you can watch the video and see how that goes out, but just don't just click on something and, you know, create system or store points before you do anything. Just be extra careful if you want to go do this because you, I mean, you never know what's out there. And especially with leaks, people will just put up everything and they can list it as whatever. So, exactly. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, back to what you're saying. Me. Speaking of Skype virus, Lil Potu, is this your your new uh new Skype pick? No, anyway. Very funny. Lil, ha, is this ha, your ha. new profile? Pick? Hey. Wow. Hey Potu, got that two hundred dollars for me? Hmm. Got that two hundred dollars from me and my pals at the FBI. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you got some jokes. Yes. I didn't even understand that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this your new profile joke? <laughs> wow. uh, anyway. All right. So then the final bit of news is from the latest Halo bulletin. And we finally have concrete details about Halo 4's progression system, the unlocks, the loadouts, that whole deal. I'm going to link the bulletin in the description if you want to read it in full because I don't honestly feel like reading it all. But I am going to highlight a couple important things that some of you may want to know at a casual glance. When you first hop on War Games, new recruits are issued the following. You get an assault rifle, magnum, frag grenades, and the default recruit armor. Um, An emblem, one visor color, and a stance for your Spartan that you can put on your, like, service card or whatnot. Then to rank up and unlock further um, things, there are 50 ranks to earn your way through. And to rank up, you need to earn XP. And you earn that by playing war games, Spartan Ops, completing commendations, completing challenges, and using Forge. At each rank, you will earn one or more Spartan points that are used to purchase gameplay items for your personal loadouts. Once you purchase an item, it can be used in any of your loadouts. Um, the full suite of gameplay items are available for purchase by rank 26, but you won't have enough Spartan points to buy everything in the game until Spartan rank 50. 
It's up to you to decide the order in which you want to build up the arsenal for your Spartan 4. So if you know you're going to get something you really want at a certain rank, probably be best to withhold your Spartan points until you, that becomes unlocked to you to actually purchase it rather than spending them all on the first things which become available to you. If they're not necessarily things you're going to be using a lot. Um, and then, of course, you know, blah, blah, they go on to talk about the loadouts. They actually highlight commendations and uh, challenges, which look to be overhauled and made a lot better. Commendations pretty much appear to work exactly the same way. I'm not sure if they still have... Oh, yep. I guess I should have read. They still have their, you know, different tiers. So commendations are basically the same, except you actually unlock some of the armor pieces by getting commendations. Ch huh. Challenges are going to work like this. Challenges are divided into four categories, and we have two weekly campaign challenges. With war games, we have two daily challenges, two weekly challenges, and one monthly challenge. Spartan Ops, we have six challenges if they don't specify daily, monthly, or weekly. So I, I would like assume there would be like six challenges for every level or every set of levels i don't know i don't know what the deal is with that i guess it'll become clearer to launch and then with waypoint there will be exclusive daily challenges for war games that you unlock via waypoint that give you exclusive armor and whatnot so yes it's pretty interesting i i do have to say that's pretty now that you talk about it it's um pretty interesting that at least we will be able to unlock everything, but at the last level. So it's kind of like in Halo 3, where you had to get all of the gamer point, all of the gamer points to uh, to actually unlock all the armor and stuff like that. Yes, Halo 3. But at the same time, <laughs> with and you said that the Spartan points are for the loadouts and the stances and stuff like that, and the armor are unlocked via different methods? Yeah. With armor, you don't have to actually spend the points on the armor. You just kind of unlock the armor whenever you unlock it. Ch through challenges, through commendations, you get some armor just through ranking up normally, like in Reach, except you don't have to buy it. But, you know, the, the, some you have to jump through hoops. Like, to get Mark VI, you have to beat the campaign on Legendary. I, I'm so up for that. <laughs> Man, LD's gonna have it tough. Too bad. <laughs> Wait, what? Why am I gonna have a I'm talking about Mark Six on Legendary. <laughs> I'll be quiet. <laughs> be quiet right now. I'm not. <sighs> got a BTB, LG. <laughs> be the best. Yeah, be I the got best. A BTB, all right. I'm gonna run through bloody everything I possibly can. Any Covenant and then uh, Forerunner, whatever fights. Vroom. Bye bye. Yes. But yes, that is all the Halo Four news and all of the news that we have to talk about. Today. Woo! And on okay. that note, this is gonna be fun. The next thing we have to talk about. Oh, Ooh, the triumphant um, return. Oh, okay. Of my segment, but first, what were you saying? No, I was just gonna say real quick. This is right on the subject of Halo Four. Ah, oh, okay. Just forward unto dawn. Has anyone been keeping up with that? Or I haven't actually gotten a chance to see ep see episode two yet. But I, 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 oh, I, I kind of figure it's like when all the episodes are released, we should do like a TTV review and forward in the dawn the whole series. Yeah. Dude, I'm so up for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm up for that too. So far, it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's taking on some, you know, classic sort of neo military tropes in which you have, oh, this guy who just wants to end the senseless violence, and he's like, oh, I want this war ever end. I don't want to fight for a cause that I don't believe in. So it's kind of a bit generic in that way, but it's, I think, just the involvement of the Halo universe and like how they're really integrating it into everything. It seems, you know, seems quite more, I guess, more interesting in terms of science fiction and of course they have an international cast which you don't see a lot in movies because you know a lot of armies are around one nation they have an international cast here i think that's kind of working well the that's asian what, dude's pretty cool the whole halo series has pretty much had that because it's not about the country it's about the race of humanity yeah. itself 
Yeah, but it's I just I find it kind of interesting that like even even now it shows in like you know in Halo Four even now agents are still very considerate about their scores. But the, guy, the, guy, the guy's father, he's like you know you you know your um your record has been good, but your combat scores has been less than satisfactory. Yeah, he's, I'm like <laughs> yep, you know that's that, that's yeah. realistic. That's that's exactly what you know. Culture. And uh, they haven't they haven't been countries in like a really long time because they're only the United Nations now. But they're still yeah. keeping up with cultural differences. I know, it's kind of interesting. And I mean, they still have accents. Can you believe that? After all this time, they haven't developed a new accent, even though they've all gone to these different planets. And they like they haven't lost their old accents, even though there's everybody's just one nation. Apparently, uh, next episode, episode three, is where the plot starts pick up a bit that's i guess like i hope that comes kind of early on because that's like three out of five and like if the plot only starts to pick up in the middle it's gonna be like you know it's not exactly a huge plot line it's all about this one you know encounter with the covenant that master chief just so happens to be at it's really what it sets the stage for that's important but I just I, I like it a lot. The filming is very well done, and you know, especially in episode two, you get some great shots of like you know that warthog, just riding riding around, and you're like you know that's that actually exists now. You know you can because they showed it at uh some conventions. Mm-hmm. They have an actual drivable warthog, and I think they've been using that in the movie. I'd like and, to get. They've had yeah. warthogs before that. I know it's just I mean like. When they film it and like you see it on film and interacting with people and stuff, it's just sort of like you know, well, it's it's like this thing from video game really implanted into real life. Uh, it, Halo has just the amount of believability in order to do that, and of course, like you know, you see everybody grabbing assault rifles and you know doing all that stuff. I don't know, I kind I kind of like that as a as a fan. I mean, yes. I, that's kind of general. It but, is you pretty know, it's, cool. You know, yeah, it's just pretty cool in that aspect. Well, all right. Uh, yeah. They they have some very creative solutions to uh, strategy, and at the end of episode two, which you could you couldn't really do in like a normal Halo game, but you know the the soldiers, they basically they basically just camp the flag and then take off their helmets to make it look like they're still there. Hmm. Interesting strategy, it kind of works. Uh, it's like yeah. real life military, nothing yep. is completely solid. <laughs> I know mil- real life military. You camp everywhere. Camping is like the most legitimate strategy there. No <laughs> one just goes and does stuff. Real life military. Yeah. The enemies don't have helmets that know exactly where you are. That too. But uh, I will say this: the supervisor does actually use the word noobs. Like she's in the line of dialogue, she's like, "You know what? I can't believe I know I had to take the tour to, you know, of you two noobs around." And I was like, "What? Huh? Um." I mean, I guess, is that supposed to be like a nod towards the players or like... That is a term. I mean, it is a term, but you don't really see military people using it. It just seems out of place there. Mm-hmm. Like military supervisor, but, you know. Old jargon. Yeah. Well, well, whatever. Let's... Yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Yes. Sorry for reading it from time. No problem. It's something we should have actually been talking about, but I was I I guess in the back of my mind I was like, let's save it for when the episodes are actually done. But I guess it could yeah. be a cool you know recap to do every week. Like, what do we think of the oh. forward and the dawn show? That can, that can work, I guess. All right. All right. Anyhow, so next we we are going to cut into the triumphant return of my segment, which I haven't done in who knows how long. And you all know what it is. So here we go. Alright everybody, I'm Messnack, and without further ado, let's take a look at what's going to be brought to attention today. Now, if you all go to the front page of BZ Powers News, you'll be granted with the uh, presence of a certain news article. 
Lego Lord of the Rings developer diary revealed. No, <laughs> scroll down a bit and then you will see what I am talking about. It stands out because it is an opinion piece. <clears throat> and it is titled Rumors Abound. And the gist of this article is that while attending BrickCon the past weekend, this dude, I'm not sure who he is exactly that posted this news article. Do you know? Um, I, honestly, I have no idea. I guess this is sort of the the bad thing about having real names in news reports. You never know who actually did it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so some I'll some guy attended BrickCon and he t- talked to Kevin Hinkle, the bridge between the fan community and the Lego group. He's like, you know, the guy that's sprung up in recent times. Um. You know, they talked about stuff. This person mentioned he'd like to see some official word on Bionicle's status, so he asked Kevin Hinkle to say that Bionicle is never coming back, just to quell the rumors. And his response was, I can't say that. Naturally, this was a bit confusing, this person says. (laughs) Of course, this question came after the trick win in which I asked him to say that the Bionicle... The Bionicles is never coming back. Just to frustrate the grammar sticklers among us. I thought it was established that Bionicle is dead and gone, but Kevin said that he cannot establish with absolute certainty that it won't be coming back someday. He did confirm it won't be returning next year. And this person basically is like, what do you think of this? You want to know what I think, Micah? Mika? Whoever you are? I th- it's Micah. I think this is old news. At what point did this qualify as relevant news to be posted? Lego has never confirmed. They've never said Bionicle is never coming back. They've made it absolutely clear that it is that it, it, there there is always the possibility for it to return eventually. And the reason is because notice that they've always used the term foreseeable future when referring to the line, and the reason is because, okay, at the end of the day, Lego chose to end the Bionicle line for creative reasons, and, you know, sales reasons as well, thought that maybe they should branch out and try a new line and see how that did, because Bionicle had been going on for 10 years and its sales had begun to drop, blah, 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 we already know all this. The significance is, at the end of the day, Lego may have ended the theme for creative reasons, but Lego's still a business. They're still a company. If ever they deem that the idea behind Bionicle could again be profitable, and they determine that you know it may be in their best interests to bring it back, just because they canceled it at one point is not going to stop them from bringing it back again, if that makes sense. We already knew this. This article, this so-called news article isn't really news whatsoever. And it, well, what really gets me is, okay, this person who posted the news, whoever the heck you are, <laughs> still don't know. If, if, if you saw that this was, you know, fit to be posted on the news, maybe you, maybe, maybe you misunderstood Lego and all their press releases and all their comments and all their, you know, stuff they said about the issue, despite it being, like, you know, over, I'd say... Nearing three years since the announcement that Bionicle was over. Maybe you misunderstood. Or maybe you forgot. I don't know. All right. That's fine. But of, but you are obviously staff on BZ Power. Okay. And you know how this community works and you know everything that happens in the community. And you knew full well that if you were going to post this news article that it was going to incite all this again. All the, you know, oh, bring back Bionicle... Hero Factory's terrible discussions. And it has. Let's look at page one of the talkback for this topic. Okay. It's almost an entire page of people saying, this is old news, you're misinformed, we already knew this, etc., etc. You, you know, this is pretty interesting that you'd post this. And there are a few comments from people that are like, oh, this is very interesting. Maybe Bionicle will return. And then we go to the second page of the talk back, where people begin to quote these people that made, you know, these posts. 
myself being one of them because the second page is really where the whole thing started because people were actually, you know, starting to look at the people that were expressing their opinions and that, you know, they have the right to do this. Like, I don't, I don't want to call this person out, but there was a post that, but the gist of it was basically oh, the negativity in this forum is unbelievable. What happened to the BZ Power I once knew? And the guy left this forum because everyone here focuses, the neg focuses on the negatives of every situation. All right. And then, you know, someone else replied to him and was like, oh, I agree. I took issue with this person and posted my, you know, brief comments. And I'm going to, like, read my short post here, and this will pretty much cap my opinions on this issue. I've got no problem with people having hope, but there are certain people on this forum and elsewhere that like to take every grasp of info supporting Bionicle's possible return to the extreme, like certain quotes from Greg Farshti, to name one example and obsess over them, going on and making all these repetitive comments, mini rants, blog posts, and interesting posts on the forum itself, like the one you quoted, the one I was talking about, about all oh, the negativity on BZ Power is so much regarding the issue. And it gets pretty annoying at times, because the majority of the people who actively perused the forums got pretty tired of it like two years ago. There's a very fine line between being optimistic and just displaying blind fanaticism towards a subject, just like there's a ver just like there is regarding being a pessimist and being a realist. You don't have to want Bionicle to come back to be a fan. Some just don't think now is the right time with Lego's current mindset regarding story-based themes, which it isn't. Some don't want to see the franchise they love tarnished by a return handled improperly. This has all been covered before. This news article is nothing substantial and was created solely to incite all of this again and get people's tempers flaring. It's obviously succeeded. And then the second I made that post, the topic completely shifted gears and it has now pred predictably gone into Hero Factory isn't that bad of a story theme. Bionicle shouldn't come back for whatever reason. Bionicle should come back. For whatever reason, etc., etc. Hero Factory's terrible. What are you guys' thoughts on this issue? Here's... Okay, before no, yeah. Kahi. <laughs> before before anybody starts speaking, I do want to clarify that Micah is Kakaru. Ah, okay. Thank you. Very much, Kakaru. Well, Kakaru, you're an interesting person. <laughs> Mm, this well i mean first off it's kind of a legal matter or not legal matter but it's like a very good business practice to say that nothing's going to come back simply because like it was paid like a ton of money to trademark the names yeah and uh you know different things of the franchise obviously they want to continue to use those at some point in time later on i mean you know so that the, the, the even the line itself is going to become extinct so yeah, just I don't I don't see how this really does count as negative. It's just very good business practice, you know. When you light, when you stop a franchise, if there is any point where you'd like to bring that franchise back, if something fails or you want to try to you you realistically want to just try something new, try to revive something old, using something you've already paid for, all the you know all the trademarks, all the you know the just sort of you know and it has established publicity and all that stuff, that's much more cost effective so yes bionicle you know is never not going to come back or not never going to come back i would yeah. say you know it, it from a business point of view it's has a more like it has a likelihood of being put out you know if hero factory fails or you know something else as opposed to something else simply because they've already put so much money into it and they don't need to spend as much money as they would something else yeah they have to like you know they have to go through this entire process of getting everything you know all these names cleared and all these you know like a, a fan base established and all this stuff already and it's more cost effective just to you know start with something new so yes that's you know that's sort of there but there's here's what I might have to say opinion it looks like it was posted on like kind of late in the day like at some point. People, uh, let me see what time was this posted. At some point, the staff were like, you know what? 
I don't think we have any news for today. And we were like, um, 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 and they're like, okay, we'll just, we'll just write something, you know, put something there, see if this goes off. Cause they got like, they got, they, I guess they did do a set review and they did the Lego games, but it just seems kind of like a add on. It, it, there is no real opinion to this at all. Yeah. It's just sort of like, it's just sort of there. It's, it's something, you know, it's like every single response anybody's ever gotten from Lego has basically said exactly that. Yeah. And of course the loyalists, the whole negativity thing. We've always focused on negative. Yeah. Yeah. I, as, as someone who loves money, <laughs> I can, <laughs> I can fully say that money is in Lego's, uh, you know, greatest interest right now because money is what, very, you know, it's, it's, this is basically what they're all about. I'm not gonna. It's I don't want to like paint them as. Yeah, I'm not gonna paint them as like you know these money hungry mongrels or anything. But look, come on, yeah, it's basically money is what everybody looks for. And at this, you know, at, at this point, they bought too much money to completely throw it away. But they're not gonna say you know and get everybody's you know try to get the fan base excited over nothing because that's not good public relations. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Basically, uh, if you're upset that people aren't, you know, looking or kind of negative at Bionicle coming back, that's because we know life. And in life, stuff leaves and they don't come back. For the foreseeable future. (laughs) Exactly. That's like, isn't that like every relationship ever? You know, you're like, yes. This is this is ending, but it might come back. In the <laughs> the Anyhow, <laughs> just pointing that little nugget out there for those who are, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's, really, it's, this is what we have to say. Yeah, go on. It's it's not so much bringing Bionicle back. That's the problem. It's bringing it back at the wrong it at the right or wrong time, like Meso said. Yes. I mean, sometimes. Your creativity for how you go about a product may drop because, hey, you've been working on it too long and you just need a breather. So that's what Lego is doing. They took a breather. They're like, okay, we're losing sales because we're obviously running out of ideas. Let's go do something else. And that turned into Hero Factory and all those other things. So fresh direction. Yeah. There's there's a lot of truth to that, but I would also I guess it's sort of point out that it's not just one person doing the whole Bionicle thing, it's like a multitude of people. So it's not necessarily like you know like you know if I was writing my comic series and I took a break, you know there's there's a bit of difference between that and like a whole you know, like a, a company of people that can you know get new talent or whatever and whatever they please. But yeah, it's it is it is a lot like that. They're just they're sort of I wouldn't necessarily say they're taking a break because that implies that Bionicle is their main thing. And they're just trying to take a little time off so they can get back to Bionicle, which is not the case. They have, yeah, they're just I mean, moving in yeah. another direction for yeah, sales. Moving, work. And, yeah. and if Bionicle – if they have ideas for Bionicle that seems to fit the newest generation or whatever generation it is that uh, they may or may not put Bionicle into, if they can come up with ideas that fits the wants of a new generation – then they could bring it back. They could not. They may never bring it back. They may bring it back when it becomes a theme that might be popular. It's like with Knight's Kingdom and all that other stuff. It goes away. It comes back. Yeah, because it's been like almost three years since the announcement was made that it's ending. Only in the last year did we actually finally get the reason that it was canceled in the first place, the definitive concrete reason and it is basically it went on for so long that it became harder and harder to follow for new people. Like they look at the theme and they're they, yeah, they, they're so, scared yeah. to jump in because there's so much backstory. It's so confusing. And the the fans that were able to follow it that were there since the beginning were stopping buying sets because they were getting older. Changing interest, yeah. not enough funds to actually pour into Lego sets. So they were, they were, the supply of new fans was dropping, the supply of old fans was dropping, and they were running out of ideas to continue it. 
So they said, yeah, let's put a, the kibosh on this. Yeah. Well, honestly, uh, you know, again, from this whole business perspective, if they were to bring, you know, they were to bring Bionicle back, they would probably wait quite a bit of time before doing so. Specifically because once, you know, the you have to wait for the the generation that grew up with your line to age. And once you become, you know, once you become getting married, once they start having kids, not only when you re-release the line, not only you have all these new kids getting interested in it, but you also have the added benefit of parents who remembered playing with them in order to, you know, and like, you know, they contributing to the kids. It. Yeah. I mean, that's – a lot of the reboots now are coming from that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for goodness sake. We just talked about that, you know? They've – it's like a lot of parents that you know, a lot of people that grew up in the eighties and the, you know the nineties and they watched the show and they're coming back. They're like, oh yeah, I remember this. And like they're more inclined to buy merchandise for their kid if their kids interested. Yes. In it. Transformers. Transformers was a big thing in like the eighties and I don't know about the nineties, but it was like it was a really big thing around then. And uh, you know, it sort of sort of like died down. Like they weren't officially canceled like Bionicle was, but they sort of died down for a while until like you know Michael Bay came back with the you know Transformers movies. That like that they got kids interested and parents are like oh I remember playing this and a lot of parents are more inclined to buy these things for their kids. So just sort of, I guess from that standpoint, if they were going to bring it back, they'd wait until a time where they can have these both audiences meet. Because like for kids, yes, kids might want something, but it really depends on the parents because you know the parents are actually going to freaking buy the stuff. Yes. So, but when you have the parents on your side. Then you have something, you know, something great. And Bionicle is approaching the point where the kids had grown up and they're going past the teenager age, you know, like early teenage until they're like, you know, 17, 18, 19, college age. They weren't old enough to be parents and they weren't young enough to buy sets. And like, and like, so that's, that could be a big contributing factor. Like you said, people, you know, the people were getting too old to buy sets and a lot of kids were afraid to jump into it. That could have been a very deciding factor. And from like, you know, like a marketing standpoint, that's something that needed to be taken considered. So yes, consideration. And, yeah, and they could modulize it. Like, if they do bring it back in that future, they could have it as sort of like a new start, a kind of fresh area that is clean of story stuff. And if you want to go back and look at the old story stuff, it wouldn't necessarily interfere with anything that the new stuff would have it would be kind of like mm -hmm. just stuff to like it's almost like looking at a history book it's not so much affecting it it may have had outcomes that brought things to a certain place but they're not definitively important to the new story to really be have to know knowledge which i guess is one final point i want to make thank you for bringing that up this isn't going to be too long because I, I, I want to get LJ and Mange's opinions and then we're kind of yeah, running yeah. long. But I do want to say real quick, these people that want it to come back, are they literally look at it and they're like, all right, well, Bionicle ended with Mata Nui defeating Makuta. And when it comes back, we're going to pick up from that point and we're going to get to see all the storylines that we would have gotten. And that's why I want it to come back. Because we were robbed, and I want to actually get what we deserve. And it's when I see posts like that, I every time I see a post like that, I die a little inside. <laughs> <laughs> because there is no way that will ever happen. It'll be a loose connection at best, the reboot. And uh, definitely reboot. Yeah. Look at the, look at all the reboots that are happening nowadays. You know. New boots are like the end thing. If Bionicle does come back, it's definitely going to be a reboot mm -hmm. of some sort. I, I, honestly, I think we should do a tea time of TTV just about this. I'd love to. At, at, at some point. I'd, I'd love just to do that. But we're kind of running on time here. So, LJ and Envy. Yes. You guys. Let's hear about them. Uh, well, I wasn't really looking to talk, but I think. I'm pretty that Bionicle was was already in this sort of limbo state where it was neither confirmed or denied yeah. what was going to happen to it. Exactly. So it's kind of pointless of an article. Yeah. It's old news, like Meso said. 
What do you think, Elder? What great opinions. <laughs> oh, oh, here. We put him to sleep! <laughs> Old news put him to sleep. Oh, that was an interesting conversation. Whoa, whoa, whoa I had this, this crazy dream where <laughs> Bionicle came back. Your dreams again? Whoa, hmm? Bionicle came back and we had William Tahu and <laughs> and, and, and Lee Wo had a daughter. Natalie, Natalie, Natalie Kongu? I, anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I, my uncle came back. Quite honestly, I see Hero Factory has been a very apt version of a reboot for Bionicle, in a way. You yeah. know, robots. Successor. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, the whole... My uncle ended and robbed me of my endings. Uh, that's completely ridiculous. My uncle's ending was fine. It left a lot to the imagination. There's literally nothing that could have gone wrong. Unless you listen to Kahi, who didn't read the books! <laughs> <gasps> but, Kahi. uh... Yeah, poser. Can't believe he's on this podcast. Anyway, yeah, I went out is... of my way to buy the final battle. <laughs> But um, it. but yeah, I definitely disagree to a reboot. I think that people are crazy when they want Bionicle to return, because why would you want Bionic Factory with the cheesiness of Hero Factory uh, with just the title of Bionicle? It's so stupid. And that because Lego will. I am that so glad you said that exactly how you said it, because that is, like, for all you people that listen to this, if you take one fact home from this huge discussion, it is that now, when I say now is not the time to bring Bionicle back, I mean it. Look at the story, look at the two story themes that are out that kind of succeeded Bionicle, Ninjago and Hero Factory. Both have plots, solid plots that, you know, have different arcs to them. Both are very lighthearted and poke fun at themselves and have all these jokes and they're like, you know, kind of cheesy at some parts, more so Hero Factory than Ninjago. Ninjago is way more plot oriented. But at the end of the day, they're very distinct and very different from the style of storytelling used in Bionicle. Bionicle had jokes, but they were in universe. You know, they were fitting, they weren't out of place, they weren't, like, kind of cheesy. But their Lego's attitude towards story themes at this moment... I want to see how Legend of Chima, Legends of Chima does. I really want to, because that will be the third story theme Lego's made since Bionicle ended. And that, in my opinion, will solidify one way or another, have they, like gone in one, one certain direction with all their story-based themes, and is there ever any hope to see a Bionicle-esque theme again? I don't know. Anyway, continue. Take that, you monster! Go back from where you came. I may be just Toa, but I'm Tahu all the same. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? Bionicle the musical? Yeah. Oh, no. That, that's exactly what it's gonna be. Well, did anyone else have anything to add? Yes, no, maybe so. Some... Okay. Sounds like it's summing it up pretty good, actually. Yeah. Well, in that case, I guess that end's brought to attention. Hopefully this doesn't happen again, but knowing BZP, it will. So. Speaking of knowing BZP... <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's time to go into our final segment for the day. The good old uh, comic maker spot. Actually, I kind of decided we're going to wait until next week. I think we're at the end of our ropes as far as uh, length goes, so I I'd rather agree. wait for an episode where I have time to really talk about something instead of um, but, uh, spending more time talking about it here. But, LJ, your spotlights are usually only ten minutes or so, and that, no, that's when you're taking oh. your time. No. Uh, the dude's ready to fall asleep on the couch, man. <laughs> I'd rather wait until next week. All right. 
Well, that'll be our first episode without a Comic Maker Spotlight since ever. We've had episodes without Comic Maker Spotlight. Our first episode in quite a while. <laughs> at least at least in like four months. So, so well, well, we can have an impromptu spotlight. The, ins- um, the uh, Kahi Insult spot right, Spotlight, where we find the best Kahi spot Insult right. uh, of, the, of the week. Spot right. And, and, and we spotlight it. So here we go. Okay, ready? Here's a theme song. Do new, do new, new, now, 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 no ting tong. Do you, do you, do ting 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 ting. Okay, welcome to the Kahi Nuva Insult Special. Today we're gonna find the best Kahi Insult and spotlight it for you guys. Here's the best Kahi Insult. There you have it. He spoke. That <laughs> insults himself right there. Thank you for listening. That's the Kahinuva and Salt Spotlight. Wow. What would be the... Oh! Kahi is so hideous. He nearly... You know, he, he's like LJ. But... <laughs> I don't know. Sort of more smart. If you got an there army go. of Kahis, you'd get a single LJ. I don't know what you said because I was busy yawning. <laughs> Anyhow. Too bad, too yeah. bad. Well, I want to thank you all for listening to the episode of TTV. Um, maybe like and subscribe and you can comment rate, and subscribe. You, you can rate if you're cool, but if you don't want to, that's fine. And you live in the 2000s. Chew on these facts. <laughs> but Kahi, we do live in the 2000s. Mm. Mm, true. What do we call those? Well, like the 2000 to 2010 era. What is that? Like about the 90s, the 80s, 70s, <laughs> the, the zeros. It's called the 2010s. I've heard the it called the, no, the 20. The new the tens are right now. We are the, the millennial. We're living it's in the, the millennial. <laughs> they just oh, that's don't. That's too kahi. long. They no just one actually says kahi. we're in the millennial. That's no. That's like all we're right. Well, anyhow. Anyway. Yes. Any, anywho. <laughs> they would call it Double the 2000s, O's. but that's not cool. Just wait until we get back maybe. into the 20s. Yes. Anyway. Well, yes. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm Masnak. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Tenebrae Invictus. I'm Potu. And this was TTV. Episode, I just realized, I completely forgot to say the episode number at the beginning. 43 or 44? No, 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 I completely forgot to say it at the beginning of the episode. Okay, and so what is it? Who cares? <laughs> uh, I think it is 44. Okay. Alright, yes, thank you for listening. <laughs>